Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss itemized deduction that goes on Schedule A. And specifically, we're going to be discussing charitable contribution. Once again, I know I keep repeating myself, but it's important to emphasize that Schedule A deductions are deductions from AGI. And what does that mean? It means on your 1040, you have a line called adjusted gross income. Any deduction that's listed before adjusted gross income is called for AGI and any deduction after adjusted gross income is a deduction from AGI. Schedule A deductions are deductions from AGI. So what are Schedule A deductions? Schedule A deductions are personal expense in nature. You could be also an employee incurring those expenses or you could have some investment interests but they are personal. It means they don't belong to a business. If they belong to a business, then you have a Schedule C. Again, those deductions, I know I keep repeating from other sessions, they only make sense. They are only beneficial if the itemized deduction are greater than the standard deduction. So you would add up all of your itemized deduction, and let's assume they add up to 22000 then you compare this to your standard deduction. What's a standard deduction? It's a number given by the government based on your filing status. Basically a deduction given, basically a free deduction. If this deduction happens to be for you 25,000, well, you don't use the itemized deduction. If your standard deduction for your filing status, it changes every year, is 17,000, then you would use the itemized deduction. Now the itemized deduction is being used less and less because miscellaneous expense deduction is suspended from the year 2018 to 2025. I know you're sick of me saying this, but it's very important to remember this. It's suspended and the standard deduction overall, the government increased the standard deduction. So to be specific, in this session, we're going to be looking at gifts to charities. And gift to charities, you could give many types of gift to charities. You can give cash or check for less than 250 You could give other other than by cash or check if it made a gift of 250 or more. You must attach form 8283 if the gift is over 500 So notice you, you could give many things. You could give cash. You can give clothing. You can give property. And because you could give so many different things, we have to be aware of the different rules. Matter of fact, this is going to be the charities, a gift to charities. I'm going to break it into two recordings because it's going to be, it's going to have a lot of details to cover. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So what is the big idea of a charitable contribution? Well, it's simply put, the government wants to encourage you to do what? To donate. Why? Because if you donate, if you donate, you are serving the public good. And basically, you are taking away this, this tasks from the government. And government loves to be helped. So basically, you're helping the government indirectly because you're helping others. Otherwise, the government will have to take care of that whatever that uh, issue is so individual and corporation may deduct contribution made to a qualified domestic organization now individuals can make contribution and corporations now when we discuss the corporations which is a separate recording there are different rules different limitation for corporations in this session we'll focus on individuals and what do we mean by qualified domestic organization in other words you cannot give this money to your needy neighbor. That's really nice of you if, you if you're helping someone. But to take the deduction, you have to give this money to a qualified domestic organization. How do I know it's a qualified domestic organization? If you're not sure, go to the IRS website and there's a list of all qualified domestic organization. Most churches, synagogue, mosques, as well as many other organizations, you just they have to be registered with the IRS. The gift have to be the contributor must have a donative intent what is what does that mean 
To gift someone, it means you are not expecting anything in return. And this is important. So you're giving this gift and you say, I don't want anything in return. Because if you get something in return, then it's going to reduce your it's going to reduce your contribution. So if the contributor receive a tangible benefit, some sort of a benefit, well, the fair market value of such benefit reduces the amount of the charitable contribution. So if you are making a charitable contribution and you don't expect anything in return to a domestic qualified organization, you can deduct this amount. However, if you made a contribution and you get some tangible benefit in return, well, you have to reduce your contribution by that benefit. Let's take a look at an example. Sarah purchases a ticket for a special performance of the local symphony, which is a qualified charity. She paid, she, uh, the ticket is priced at 150, while the regular symphony concert ticket is 50. So she paid 150, the price, she paid the 150, but the regular price is 50, okay? According to the rules, Sarah is only allowed to deduct 100 because the regular price is 50 so she paid 150 so of that 150 would say 50 is the benefit because she's getting the ticket and 100 dollars is the extra that she paid that she can get a deduction for it this means she can only deduct 100 dollars even though she paid 150 it doesn't matter if sarah attends the concert or not you know that she's limited to 100 how can she how can she get the whole 150 not to accept the ticket altogether? She would say, here's 150 for the tickets. Keep it. I don't want the ticket. Don't, don't give me the ticket back. Then she can deduct the full 150. But if she paid 150 and the, the value of the ticket is 50. Now, why did, why did she pay 150? Because want, she wants to encourage. She wants to encourage the local symphony. She paid extra, more than when they are what they are asking. If she wanted to deduct the 150, don't take the ticket. Just say, here's 150. I paid one price, but I don't want it. Once she takes it, the deduction is 100. State credit for a charitable contribution. This is fairly a new, a new deduction that the IRS is kind of making sure it doesn't happen. Several states offer tax credit for taxpayers who donate to specific states or local fund or public charities. So in certain states, if you donate money, they'll give you a tax credit on the state level, okay? To address the concern about potential abuse, because remember, your local and state taxes, you could only deduct up to 10,000. So here's what you are doing here. You make, a, you make a contribution to a charity. To a charity, and in return, you get a benefit in terms of local and state tax credit. Well, what does that mean? It means you are reducing, when you get a benefit, you are reducing your state tax taxes so you're you're getting benefit from that charity indirectly and as a result you are reducing your local taxes so what the government says is this according to these rules if a taxpayer receives a state or local tax credit that exceeds 15 percent of their payment so if you get a tax credit you know 15 percent so if you paid a thousand dollar and you get 150 up to 15 percent their charitable contribution will be reduced their charitable deduction might be reduced by that credit. Let's take a look at an example. So in 20X, 2023, Alex, a resident of State X, donated $7,000 to State X Education Fund. Okay, This donation makes Alex eligible for 40% state income tax credit, which is if he paid $2,800, if he paid $7,000, the state is giving him a 40% tax credit. It means Alex can reduce his state taxes by 2,800. So he made a donation to the state and he did get a benefit in return, but the benefit kind of a sneaky benefit in the sense that you're getting a benefit from the government, 2,800. This state credit can use to lower the overall state income tax for Alex. By making this contribution, what the IRS is saying, Alex is attempting to convert a state income tax payment subject to $10,000 limit per year into a charitable contribution, which has a limit of 30% of adjusted gross income. This is what they're saying. You are making an attempt to lower your income taxes, which is, and to benefit more. However, when Alex filed his 2023 federal income tax, he must reduce the charitable contribution by 2,800 because the tax credit exceeds 15% of the payment made because you received so too much credit. 
As a result, the contribution for the 7,000 is 7,000 minus 2,800. He can deduct as charity for federal income tax purposes, 4,200. So simply put, you cannot make a contribution, get a tax credit or a tax benefit, which is a tax credit, a benefit on the local level, then use the same contribution and get a benefit on the federal level. That's what they're saying. If you get a benefit and they allow you to get a 15% tax credit, anything above that, they would recapture it. Contribution of services. Let's assume you want, you you volunteered your time, you went down to the local Red Cross, you volunteered your time. Well, that's fine, but your time is not deductible. Your time is not deductible. Contribution of services to a qualified charitable organization are not deductible. That's your time. However, if you incur expenses, unreimbursed expenses, now you are paying something to those services to those services, then it's deductible. What could be expenses? Well, you might have to buy a certain uniform for performing the service. That might be deductible. Also, you might incur transportation costs. Sometimes you might have to travel and stay in a hotel lodging. You might incur meals while away from home for the purpose of performing the do donated service. That's different than your time. You're paying separately. Now, you could also, instead of itemizing your actual automobile cost, you could take a standard mileage rate of 14 cent, which is subject to change every year. But so when you when you travel, you'd say, okay, I'm gonna keep track of my mileage. I'm gonna multiply them by whatever government standard rate happens to be, or you can keep track of your actual cost for transportation expense. Now, travel expenses are not deductible if if there's a significant personal element of pleasure so if you really enjoy doing this and you're doing this for your own enjoyment then it's not the travel is not deductible why because there should be nothing in return when you make a charitable contribution personal pressure recreation or you went there to volunteer and it's also you're taking the vacation at the same time you can do that it's basically there's an element of personal pressure pleasure it means you are getting something in return an example would be Sarah, a delegate representing her church in Austin, Texas, travels to a two-day national conference in Chicago. After the conference, she spends a week exploring the city. Just you have to be very careful in Chicago. In this situation, none of the transportation, meals, or lodging are deductible because the travel included a significant personal element of pleasure, recreation, or vacation. So she she's a delegate to her not-for-profit organization, her church. That's great but the transportation expense cannot be deducted because there's she spent that week vacationing in Chicago. You have to be aware of certain contributions that are non-deductible. They, they try to trick you on the exam for them. Certain items are not deductible. Dues, fees, bills paid to country clubs, lodges, fraternity order, or similar groups. They are not deductible. Cost of raffle, bingo, or lottery ticket. Now, why? because you are expecting to get some benefit. Also, when you buy a lottery ticket, you may not win, but there's the expectation. Cost of tuition, if you pay someone's tuition, that, that's, that's, that's not deductible. Be sometimes they try to, 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 um, to trick you. Well, you did not give them cash, you paid the tuition. That's not charitable contribution. Payment for the right to purchase tickets for seating an athletic event in a university stadium. You're getting a benefit. Be careful. Value of blood giving to a blood bank. That's not deductible. Donations to homeowners association. Not deductible. Gifts to individuals. You know, gifts to individuals, basically the same thing as paying their tuition. Rental value of property used by a qualified charity. Let's assume you have a van or a truck and you tell them, go ahead, use it for a day or two. Basically, it has a rental value. You cannot deduct this. And when it comes to char charitable contribution, substantiation is an important factor. What's substantiation? It means you have to show evidence, evidence to support your deduction. To claim a deduction, taxpayer must have a proper documentation and substantiation. Now, what type of evidence you should have? Well, it all depends at the amount, the amount of the contribution and whether it was made in cash or non-cash because again you can give cash you can give clothing you can give a used car you can give stocks you can give bonds you can give a plane you can give a boat 
You can do donate so many different things. So different rules might apply to gifts of specific types of property, such as used automobile due to past instances, a taxpayer abused identified by Congress. And this is gets abused, used to gets abused a lot. And I'll give you a personal story. I used to be, one of my customers was a used car dealer. And, and he used to abuse this, abuse it. I don't know if abuse, whether it's illegal or not, but it was abused. Okay. So just now the Congress, what they started to do, they put more restriction on specially used car. Therefore, additional guidelines are in place for such donation. Now we're going to go over these guidelines briefly for each type of donation to give you an idea how restrictive are a charitable contribution. If you contribute cash to claim a deduction for cash, you must possess a receipt could be a canceled check or a written statement for, from the charity containing the charitable organization name, contribution date, and amount. Like, for example, if you belong to a church and you contribute money via a check, at the end of the year, they'll give you this a list of this payment. If the payment exceeds $75 and include both a contribution of goods and services, a written statement is necessary at that point. The statement should include the estimated value of the goods or service received by the donor. Okay, so you want to make sure you're aware of this. Two, non-gift, non-cash gifts. For non-monetary gifts, and here service is not for your time, by the way. For non-monetary gift, what could be non-monetary gift? Again, clothing, property, anything that you will give. For non-monetary gift, non-monetary means not money, a receipt from the charity must be retained. Okay, clothing or household item can be deducted. They have to be in good use, condition, or better when donated. In other words, if they are not and the charity cannot use them, you cannot take a deduction for them. If an item, you happen to contribute an item, the value of that item is more than 500 and it's not in good condition, a deduction if possible, if a qualified appraiser is included with in the return. Now, what's a qualified appraiser? Usually the person working at that charity will tell you and will give you a paper and it's accepted. That's, that's who would that's the appraiser. So someone will tell you what's the value of it. How do, they, how do they know the value? Because charities, they might run stores or they might sell these items on a regular basis. So they would have an idea how much it's worth. How about if you donated a boat, an airplane, or a used car? The deduction for donating those items is typically limited to the amount the charity received from its sale. Now, this is important. This is a change of rules. Because before, before the change of rules, your va the value of the donation was the fair value of, of that vehicle, of that used vehicle, whatever you think the fair value is. They changed the rules. They'd say, okay, we're going to wait until the charity sells this item and how much they will get is your deduction. So taxpayers should obtain a statement from the charity to document the sales price. If the deduction claimed is more than 500, then you have to fill out a form called 1098 contribution of motor vehicles, boat, and airplane must be included with the tax return. And as I mentioned earlier, one of my customers, one of my clients was a used car dealership and I started to fill a lot of those because I remember when the tax rule changed and Congress became more restrictive. Now let's talk about cash or non-cash gift of 250 or more. Now you're just getting over 250. To deduct the cash or property contribution of 250 or more, Taxpayer require a contemporary written acknowledgement, CWA, from a charity, including if you also have a payroll deduction gift. It means you are deducting from your paycheck on a regular basis. The CWA must obtain for donation of 250 or more in out-of-pocket expenses incurred while providing services to a charity. Now, you need the CWA. It should contain the contribution amount, property description, details on any goods or services received, and their estimated value. And this must be obtained by the earlier of the tax return, filing date, or the due date, including extensions. Non-cash gift, now we're talking about more than 500. So 250, we talked about 250, more than 500. Additional substantiation is needed. Again, the higher the amount, the more you need to show the evidence, including details on how the property was acquired and its basis. Now, if you're comp contributing cash, it's easy. Cancel check will do and the receipt from the charity. But if you're contributing other than a check, money, then you need to provide what's the basis of that. 
If non-cash contribution exceeds 5,000, now you need a qualified appraiser. Now you need to get a specialized person that's gonna appraise this asset, whatever that asset that you are contributing to, uh, to substantiate. How about if you contributed antiques, painting, jewelry, and other tangible personal property? To deduct donated property, it depends on the charity uses and its tax exempt purpose. And we'll talk about this. Now we are getting into this, the next session. If the charity uses the property for the related purpose, the deduction is based on the appreciated fair market value. So if you donated a, a painting to a museum, well, the painting to a museum is, it's going to be used in the museum. It's for the related purpose. Then you can deduct the fair market value. How about if you donated this painting to the Red Cross then or to the Salvation Army? Then it's not. Then you have to use the cost. Otherwise, the deduction is limited to the property cost. Again, we're going to talk about more about this type of property in the next session. Also, the taxpayer should obtain a statement from the charity to document the property's use. So you have to kind of get a, get a statement saying, how am I going to be using it? Am I going to be using it for my purpose or am I going to sell it? Because it makes a difference. If they use it for their purpose, you could use the fair market value. If not, you are limited to the cost basis. Valuation, again, now we're getting into the next session. Evaluation means how much how much did you contribute? You have to assign a dollar amount. Property donated. Now, if it's money, it's easy. If you're donating money, there's easy to evaluate cash, right? Cash is cash. Property donated, typically valued at fair market value. This is what we're going to be discussing first when the gift is made. The fair, what's the fair market value when we say fair market value is the price of which the property would be exchanged between a willing buyer and a willing seller with reasonable knowledge and no obligation to buy or sell. That's what the fair market value is. Charitable contribution do not provide fair market value. So it's the taxpayer responsibility. Now, for something clothing, they might tell you it's the fair market value because they are considered qualified appraiser. But if we're looking at something else, they may not be expert in that. So you have to provide written evidence of the donation, uh, the taxpayer responsibility to obtain written evidence of the donation from the charity and determine the appropriate value. So it's your job to do so because you're taking the deduction, they're not. Again, clothing for something less than 500, they can do it for you. But something larger, you have to, you have to uh, take care of that. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs to do what? To understand the concept of Schedule A charitable contribution. In the next session, it's going to be part two for charitable contribution, where I talk about the different type of property that you can contribute to. And what are the limitations? Because you have, again, there's always a ceiling. Congress is a generous to a point. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.